Hey, how's it? Welcome to the channel. Uh, I just picked up this uh, first mate from Phil Marine. So just kind of kind of unbox what I got today. I also did get what is this? Uh, five passengers just for when I go out fishing or if I got my family out on the water. Uh, you know, living in Hawaii, we do get a lot of open ocean, a lot of strong currents. So all of that plays a big factor with the new law that just came into effect. You know, I'll be honest, I never wear my lanyard, so especially when I go out fishing, um, it just makes more sense. If I'm wearing something that I'm not attached, you know, to the helm, then I would probably wear it versus if I have a lanyard and I get a big fish on the reel, I'm not going to touch, you know, I don't want to be connected. Then I turn the boat off on accident. I'll probably lose the fish. All right. So let's check out what we got. All right. So here we go. I already opened up the box, but I'm going to pull everything out. So here's going to be the captain's fob. This is going to be either the lanyard or the wrist. Inside here. So I'm gonna have a set of instructions. You're gonna actually have your unit. And then I currently have a Garmin, I heard that even though I have NME 2000, it is not supported yet with Garmin. So I'm not going to hook this up just yet, but I'm going to hook up everything else. And I do have a 21 foot Boston Whaler Montauk. It's a 2018 model, model year, I should say. Okay. And then you're also going to have, you're going to have your accessory hub. So inside here, go ahead and see what we got. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have the screws. So I can go ahead and screw that in. I gotta find a location for it. My antenna, and then the chip. And I believe that's the program. Okay. And inside here, I already opened up the plastic bag that it was in, but it's gonna be my harness. And I do have a Mercury 150. Uh, motor on my boat so it looks like it's just going to be all plug and play so i'm actually kind of excited about that since everything is plug and play it should be pretty easy i honestly think the hardest part that i'm going to have is finding a nice area to mount this guy and when you do mount it it has to be up like this so we'll see how everything goes hey what's up guys so this is going to be the boat i'm going to be installing uh the first mate on this is my 2018 210 montauk so i've had it you know since 2018 i love it the one thing i gotta be honest about is i do go offshore fishing i don't wear that lanyard honestly it's uh, more of a nuisance that gets in the way you know if there's a fish on the last thing i'm trying to do is shut my motor off especially if i'm trying to keep the lines tight or if we're chasing a marlin down um, which we've had a couple instances where the marlin line's going straight back, but it hooks up and you can see the marlin on the side of the boat. Um, so yeah, just with that being said, the last thing I'm trying to do is lose a fish. Obviously, you know, safety first, but when you're in the moment, you're just so excited about catching a fish. You're not even thinking like safety is honestly the last thing on your mind. So with that being said, with this product coming out, it's definitely something that always crosses my mind when I land. You know back on shore and it's like oh you know i wish i would have wore a lanyard or i wish i could have been a little bit safer this will give me that aspect of feeling safe so here we go we'll go install it all right guys so here we are we're at the helm uh, just to show you so this is my lanyard right now as you can see it is toast i mean literally this is how it sits when i drive every once in a while i'll drive and i'll just hold on to it but it really does absolutely nothing um i do tell you know when i have my friends coming fishing with me if something happens obviously pull it and that'll shut the motor off but i think there definitely needs to be a better way which this should be that answer so we're gonna go ahead and install it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the inside of the helm out 
uh, make room so that we can go inside the back and connect everything up. So let's get back to it. All right, so I just kind of cleaned out the inside of the helm area. Uh, I got to take off this back panel to reach uh, the kill switch. So I'm going to go ahead and take this part off. And then from here, I guess I'm going to see where I would even be able to mount uh, the hardware and kind of go from there. So bear with me. All right, well, here's the inside. Definitely could uh, clean up some wires in here, but not today. Just gotta figure out where I'm gonna be able to mount this. I don't know how well you can see inside there. Um, the Y is split. It was honestly a real simple plug and play. Again, I have a 2018 210 Montauk uh, Boston Whaler. So it literally is plug and play right there. All right, here's one thing that, you know, I've heard that you need to kind of keep on board is batteries. So this actually comes with a battery. Kind of curious what size it is, give me a second. So it is 2430, three volts. Okay. So that is gonna be what you're going to have for the battery here. And it's supposed to let you know when you're running low on your battery. So go ahead and install it. There we go. So install. All right. So one thing it's asking me to do is turn on my motor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on real quick. I have run water running to the back. There it is. Shut off. All right, continue on the setup. All right, so work for now. I'm gonna move on to my next setup system. All right, so I just set up my TDS and uh, I'm gonna start pairing the system. As you can hear, it's making a loud beep. All right, we are paired. And uh, lock, unlock the engine, Captain Fob, or with the app. Done. All right. So, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and lock it. I'm going to shut it off. Okay, now let's see if I turn it on. Oh. Okay. All right, so I just got the message that I'm connected. Uh, the engine is not locked, so I can start it. I'm gonna lock it. Lock engines. Uh, TDS is prohibited from locking the engines with this app while your Captain Fob is connected and enabled. TDS disconnect. Okay, so I guess I have to do it from my watch. So let's see if I... Okay, uh, device deactivated, uh, disconnected, engines are locked, mob is deactivated. Okay, so now as you can see, my engines are locked. All right, so let's try start it. I still have water running through the back. Mm -hmm. Why did it start? Question. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Captain Fox. Huh. Not configured. All right. As you can hear, the motor's on. I'm connected. Everything's good. I'm going to simulate if I walk away. See what happens. So, I'm walking away from the boat. no longer detects my boat but I can still hear the engine running so obviously if you're on land that's not gonna work all right so I have everything on I've been having a little bit of a headache I couldn't figure out what was going on I would push the button to sh simulate that I was off I walked down the road everything nothing would shut off so I went to go mess around with the settings. I literally have to have my prop on. So if my prop is on and I hit the button, so bear with me, it's gonna kill the motor because I pushed the button that I'm overboard, okay? As you can see, everything stopped. My phone is going crazy, letting me know that all of this stuff is going on. Okay, so I'm gonna put myself back into neutral. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on, reconnected. I'm going to go to lock my engine. I'm going to enable the TDSS. Okay. Just to show you guys this portion of it. So when I go down here to start it. Sorry, I did not lock my engine. Okay, engine's locked. So if it's not, if you forget to push the lock button, it won't do anything. But I can't do anything. Push the button. You're gonna hear the beep. Now I can start. So hopefully that clears up that part. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk away just to see what it's like. Okay, so bear with me. Let me climb down. Oh, almost forgot to put my boat in gear. Okay, I'm in gear. I am going to pretend. Like I am walking away. So we're still connected. Good enough. No, you gotta go a little bit away once it loses it. I still have signal, surprisingly. Lost signal. So, if you walk away from the boat, you don't do anything. Literally what you have to do, so people don't understand, because when I bought this, I was under the impression I go overboard, um, the, the boat will stop. So what you have to do is, you have to push the button. And it shuts down. That's what it comes down to, you have to push the button. Alright, I'm back on my boat. Uh, I pushed the button it disabled the motor if you look on my screen it says my engines are locked I have not reconnected uh, so if I come let's say I'm stressed I just swam back to my boat I jumped on I try to turn my motor it won't stop it did let me know something was going on it now picked me up because I accidentally touched the button <laughs> just to let me know um, but now since I touched it, you hear the noise, it'll go. If I disconnect, 
I'm disconnected here. It's giving me a, a message letting me know that it's disconnected, engines are locked. And if I try to start, it won't. The cool thing is it lets me know that somebody tried to start my boat. So I have a tendency of leaving my keys in. It let me know somebody tried to start my boat. It's saying that there's no captain fob connected. We recommend that you cap you that a captain fob for your own and passenger safety. All right, so overall, uh, when you set up your system, make sure you let everything pair. That was the biggest thing that I noticed. You know, I'm one of those people that like to just, you know, it's connected and move on to the next stage. It literally connects and then it does something after. So it's like authenticating. So you have to wait for all of that. You cannot just keep moving forward. You know, I'm impatient. I'm one of those guys that's just like, so, okay, we're paired. Let's move on to the next step. It pairs and then it's got to do a little thing. If not, you're going to get some errors, um, which is what I got. I got a couple of errors saying that I couldn't connect my fob or I wasn't able to connect to the system. Um, again, there is an option where that I didn't know if your motor is in neutral, you know, even if you push the button, turn it on and off, it won't, you know, kill the motor. You have to physically turn that one on. So after I did that, you know, everything works now where you know, I'd push the button and then it would kill it, which is not doing it for me now. Oh, cause I didn't, I didn't have my captain's thing turned on. How's it going? Okay, so I just wanted to give some thoughts uh, to the system. So uh, this is actually gonna be a two part video. So today I did the install. The install honestly was really easy. Uh, the only recommendation I can definitely do is make sure when you are going through the process, you let everything load. If you're one of those type of guys that are like me, that as soon as you pair, you want to move on to the next step, you got to wait. It's going to authenticate. And once all of that is done, then you can go on to the next step. Um, at the same time, when you're updating your key fobs, the one thing that I learned is I had a lot of issues or errors when I was updating it from that app. Uh, from that screen so what I had to do is I had to back out go into it under um, device management and then from there I went ahead and updated it and everything worked like a charm again you just got to make sure when you go through everything let it fully load and then it'll um, process and complete so that was one of the issues that I had the other thing too is when you're initially setting up the app again it's gonna kind of give you three screens it's not gonna tell you that you have to go through those screens because technically if you click on it it's going to tell you okay pair to device and you're trying to figure out how to scan for device how to pair for it in those sections it wants you to skip through it and then it'll start the pairing process it's not pairing at that point which is what i thought it was um, nothing says that even in the directions it doesn't say any of that type of stuff so that was a little bit on the confusing side but once you actually realize that and for me it took me a little while to realize that that's not the pairing section that's just telling you what's going to happen the next um screen was it's going to make you do a a perimeter of your boat and then the next screen uh, a couple things i am going to call fell marine tomorrow and ask some questions i was able to set up my tds which was uh temporary uh what was it called uh tds was theft deterrent system sorry and then from there i was able to get it to work the one thing is you have to be connected to the, the device and then other than that it's when you go ahead to start it it won't start if you turn it off obviously it will so if you push the button on your watch and your watch is connected and you try to start it and you have the tds on it's not going to work you have to have your watch completely disconnected for it to work uh which is kind of like if you went out you know you parked at the marina went to go get lunch you disable your captain's watch and then from there if somebody tried to start it it will let you know that somebody's trying to start your boat that there needs to be a captain's fob and it'll send you a message on your phone at least you'll be able to know at that point so i do like that feature that's actually pretty cool um one thing that took me a little while to figure out was shutting off for the man overboard so if the motor is in neutral um it's not gonna work you push the button it'll just disconnect the captain's the, uh, the captain's watch it will not shut the motor down if you go in neutral forward and you push the button it will disable it uh, one of the testings that I did do is I left the area. So for example, um, I went on a little bit of a walk as you've seen in one of the videos 
and it didn't shut down the motor. I'm curious to know what happens and that's why I said there's gonna be two parts to this video because I am actually going to take it out on the water and I'm gonna put the, uh, the captain's watch on my son, have him jump off the boat in neutral forward and see if that shuts down the motor, you know, assuming that he's the captain of the boat and I'll have the, uh, the passenger fob on me just to, you know, kind of get the notification to see, to put the full system to the test. You know, if I'm gonna go 25, 30 miles offshore, I wanna make sure this thing works. So I'd rather go out to the sandbar in Kanyoe and do a couple test runs and just see what happens. So that'll be all in part two. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna call Fel Marine and ask him if there's a radius. So one thing that I am curious about is if, for example, you jump off the boat and it doesn't shut off, at what point does it automatically shut off or does it not? Because when I walked away, you know, with the fob in my hand, it didn't shut off. And to me, that's kind of scary because my boat's going to still keep drifting or driving away. Um, you know, obviously you can push the button, but my thought is what happens if I hit my head or what happens, you know, if I had like a heart attack and I fell off the boat and I don't, I just can't push the button. That's a concern that I have. So from there, I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, I am going through the owner's manual, reading the whole entire thing. So hopefully I'll get some answers there as well. I just kind of wanted you guys to see what I'm going through while I'm installing all of this and just trying to get up to date on it. Uh, so this is my honest review. I'm not getting paid for anything. Uh, I did pay full price for the product. I don't have any links or any reviews. You can go to Phil Marine, uh, firstmate.com or whatever it is, and you can buy the app there or buy the product there. Again, I bought mine. I also bought five uh, passenger bands just in case because you know I do have a family of five. And my brother will come out with us every once in a while. And the last thing I'm trying to do is have to call in the Coast Guard uh, to help me find my friends or family. So, again, check back for part two of the video. I'm going to go do real life testing and we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, I can get some answers. If I can get some answers tomorrow from uh, Phil Marine, I'll update that on this video as well. All right. Aloha. All right. Good morning. So, um, Shaggy here again uh, when, when we're not fishing in an adventures. So uh, I did get off the phone this morning uh, with Phil Marine. Their customer service is awesome. Called, left a message, and literally I was just starting to go through my phone, you know, scroll the internet, got a phone call within like two, three minutes. So I was surprised after I left the message how fast they got back to me. Um, so shout out to them. Definitely was able to take care of me again. There is no sponsorship, nothing from them. I am doing a, a review solely for myself. Uh, I am on my boat this morning and I usually cover it up. I left it uncovered overnight and I remember why I cover up my, bo my boat every day. It's a mess. But yes, yeah, so let's answer some of the questions from that I had yesterday. Um, based off of everything that I explained uh, to Phil Marine, everything is set up correctly because it was literally plug and play. As long as I'm able to push the button on my fob while my boat's in neutral forward, it shuts off the motor and that tells it, that also says that everything is correctly done. So realistically what's going to happen is i'm going to have to go on the water and do the water test so we'll probably go out there later this evening uh, this afternoon i got some things to do and then we'll get on the water do a test with my son you know have him jump off the boat simulating that if he was a man overboard i'm going to have him do it once with uh the captain's remote and then another time with the passenger fob just to kind of see the different reactions of it uh, another question for servicing that was brought up which was pretty cool is there's four different ways that you know, technically you can have a service department um, unlock your TDS, which is you can share the app with them. Um, you can unlock it just manually so I can have it unlocked when I drop it off to them. And the other thing was uh, the RFDI security chip, which is if it's accessible on my boat, which is a whaler, it's not going to be as accessible as if it was, you know, on a bigger boat that it was literally mounted and you can just tap the RFDI chip to it. So again, I can just leave it unlocked. I can um, share the app with them and they could do it. They could also do the RFDI chip. And then um, it's not, uh, what did they tell me? You have to be within Bluetooth range to be able to do it. So those are pretty much the features of it. And oh, the other one was if they have the key, the fob itself. Um, personally, I probably would just leave it unlocked for them or I would share the app with my service guys where they can just 
go ahead and unlock it themselves because what's cool about it is you can set a time limit for when they can and cannot do stuff and they were they reaffirmed me that even though they have the app if they're not within bluetooth range of my my vessel there's nothing that they can do um so they can't lock me out of my own boat you know if i'm out on the water or whatever the case may be so that answered some of those service questions uh the rest of it comes down to is just testing it out on the water uh so stay tuned that's gonna be part two i'm gonna make a whole another video just for that that video should be a lot shorter this was more on the technical side of just to install how it went um the other thing is with a Garmin, which is what I have, it's not available yet for the NME A2000 where it's gonna send a ping or a pong to the, the GPS system. So I don't have that hooked up just because, you know, on um, it's not available. Uh, they're not talking to each other yet. So once they have all of that stuff figured out, then at that point, I'll go ahead and install that as well. All right, aloha, I'll see you guys on the water. All right, so I just wanted to show, I just turned the battery on. Um, I have not activated, or I should say woken up my captain's um, remote. My app does show that I'm connected. I'm gonna try and go ahead and start the motor because the TDS was on and I cannot start it. So let's see if I wake up. It just woke up. I got the messages saying that it woke up. Now I should be able to All right, so I have everything installed. It's over there. And then my antenna is mounted straight down from the top. So again, everything is here. Um, everything looks fine. So I'm gonna put everything back together and uh, I will get everything on the water and go from there. See you guys on the water.